Underneath the skeleton that you see here is a 986 Porsche Boxster. This Boxster had been sitting around for a while that Tony acquired for $500 and we've been cutting it down in the pursuit of building the perfect vintage supercar. The Boxster is known to be a very capable sports car and it's also known to be extremely rigid for an open top car because it was designed with an open top right from the start. We had to cut out a lot of that Boxster chassis to make room for the vintage inspired body that we're making and to extend the wheelbase. We've been adding that structure back in with our roll bar, but we didn't finish it because we didn't know where the body lines were going to be. Now that we do, we can add in the extra structure and get this all tied together. Also, last week we spent a good bit of time strengthening the tubing for our rear clamshell. So this week we're gonna tie up a few loose ends. So when we build a structure here, we wanna make sure that we support the roll bar as well as we can. So what I wanna do is go from this mounting point here to the corner of the strut mount. But what you can see is this is in the way. So first things first, we gotta cut it out. Say no more. I'm just making sure here that I didn't cut off the spot welds, especially on this side, because this flange was so much shorter. The spot weld's actually down below here, so this outer plate is like spot welded to this inner plate, so I can actually go back even further and make it look even more seamless. But step one is cut back far enough to look, and then go further from there. So the first thing I wanna do is reinforce this strut tower. We're gonna to do that by adding a piece of tubing that goes down to where the original roll bar mounted and then up to the corner of the strut tower. In order to do that, we need a flange to weld to. And so I'm gonna go over to the plasma table and cut that out. So this Eastwood VersaCut plasma table has a nice shape library that we can choose from. Unfortunately, we're looking for a two hole flange, which is not in the shape library. And as with most things, there's more than one way to do thing. I see there's a four hole flange there. I could make a four hole flange that I cut in half manually. I could go over to the computer and we could design a flange or there's this little guy here. And I think if we use this and make that center hole a zero, we might get what we want. So this is what I came up with. Like I said, we made this zero. We made these the size of the bolt holes. Had to adjust this center size to one millimeter over what the outside was because it didn't like when I made them the same distance, but we're gonna cut it out and see if it works. Just a little bit off. So do 40 mil in the center, drop the ends to 13, and then cut off wheel yeah. the inside. Impressions are so basically straight. All right, so we made our adjustments to the first flange, and by Going back and incorporating this shape, it gives us more room for our tubing to land and also fits within the space. And Tony didn't have to use a computer, which is good for him because he hates computers. They hate me. They started it. This week's video is paid for and sponsored by FlexiSpot. 
My chair was ready to be replaced. It's old, it's worn out, there's no back support, and it is not what you need when you are trying to get work done. I chose the FlexiSpot C7 Max for its versatile functions. The seat has a nice thick latex layer which provides a lot of cushioning and it's much softer than regular foam cushions. The adaptive lumbar support conforms to my spine and moves with my movements for all day comfort. The 5D armrests are amazing. They rotate 360 degrees and the base rotates 240 degrees so you can truly put them in any position that you need to while you're working. There's a 30-day return policy for a risk-free trial and a five-year warranty with direct replacement for damaged parts. Black Friday sale is coming and you can grab the best discount on FlexiSpot, including standing desk, ergonomic chair, and more. Use our exclusive code C750 to purchase the C7 or C7 Max now and enjoy a $50 discount. It's the best time to buy the C7 or C7 Max. So typically, especially a modern vehicle, is put together mainly with what are called spot welds. If you do any collision repair, you're very familiar with this. Uh, so the way it works is when they join two panels together to weld them, they take a machine that presses them the panels together and then sends an electric pulse between them and it welds the panel. It doesn't have any additional like filler rod or anything. It's just the two panels melting to each other. So after digging around, we determined that the spot welds for this structure here and the tub are down below this flange, which means I can fully eliminate this flange and make it look a lot better. So while Tony's getting his flanges ready to weld to the chassis, I'm going to remove these flanges to make it look a lot cleaner, because later on, we're going to be probably sandblasting all of this to make it look really fresh. So if you're worried about looking like a Mad Max vehicle right now, that's gonna go away. But what we'd like to do is have a nice clean surface to paint, and I don't wanna have this ugly flange just plasma cut and ratty on the end product. So we're gonna work on that. Hmm. Brian! It's fine. <laughs> After that whole spiel about spot welds, the one little like four inch segment right here, it reversed the other way, but I'll just weld the edge. It'll be just strong, it'll be fine. This like, that little bit of flange there is not gonna be any stronger than if I just run a big weld the whole way through across. What do you think? This is not what we discussed. <laughs> but all right, that's, a well, way to, that's a way to do it. What do I so, need to change, boss? How can I make you happy? Th it's fine. It, it, it is what it is now. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead and weld it, I guess. All right. We'll just have to live with it this way. It's like I have to live with you. <laughs> you wait, got that I don't, part, wait, right? I don't actually live with you. <laughs> no, don't put that in. I'm going to weld this tube in, but first, I'm just going to tack it to the plate that Tony made so I can lift it up out of the way and then clean up underneath so we can weld it also to the base. Because right now if I tried to weld that, it wouldn't work, but I want to keep it in its right orientation. The other reason I'm pulling it off also is because if I lift this plate out, I can weld it all the way around the tubing, whereas if I try to weld it where it's sitting, I'm not going to be able to do that in that space. So big brain moves. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. That's fine. I can just do to my plate. Nothing. I uh, had a little bit of boo boo and blew through the edge here. Uh, according to Tony, we need this nut. I think it survived the fires in Wardor, maybe. Yeah, we're good. It's fine. Everything's fine. Plan B. First off, this nut does still work. But second off, rather than use the nuts, kind of redundant, might as well just skip the nut and weld down inside there, weld to the stud. So we're gonna do that. Hey, 
Everything's a welding table if you're brave enough. So if we tie this tube in here at the top and in here at the bend, it's pretty much parallel to the ground. We tried that, that we planned right. that this whole time. Yep. We've planned that this entire time. We've got new hole saws for our tubing. And I'm very excited. Hey. Amateur. So ironically, after that whole shebang there, uh, we don't have the right size hole saw that we need for the one side of this tube. We have plenty of inch and a half, which is the roll bar, but inch and a quarter is the other end, and we don't have inch and a quarter. We're gonna make do with inch and a half. What'd you do, Ryan? <laughs> that was what are you? Oh, yeah. That's fine, I fixed it. You right. fixed what's wrong with you? <laughs> no, I fixed uh, what's wrong with oh, okay. this. Yeah, I didn't which think is nothing, that. Actually. I didn't think that was happening. <clears throat> All right. Just put that right on that line. I don't even know where that line came from. I didn't put it there. I think it's the top of the door, maybe? Gotta love it. That one came out so much better than the other side. I mean, both sides are functional, but that one was nice. I'm getting better at this. The new tubing makes everything look more race car-y, and I really like that. And additionally, also, it braces things, which we needed that as well. More importantly, it looks much cooler. And I really like how it fits within the skin so nicely. Now when you open this up, the clamshell up here, when we're showing off the insides, you'll see all this nice tubing here. Um, the idea later on is to paint the tubing and the chassis and everything else, and it'll be a different color than the actual body color and the exterior. And before you ask, no, we're not telling what the body color is gonna be. That might be because we're still figuring it out, but you'll like it, don't worry. Now, it's time for the next challenge in the video. So our clamshell is 100% functioning now, and it is very solid, but not as solid as I'd like. The main issue is the rear clamshell back here, like the rear rear where the hinge is, is very solid, and then the front part portion is pretty solid, but right through here, if you did a cut right through, there's five major tubes that attach everything, and they're all in a straight line. They're not triangulated at all. So what I'd like to do to solve this is do the like partial wheel arch and tubing up through here. Since this tubing is a little girthy, I don't want it up right to the edge of the tire because that, if we end up going like really close to having like the, you know, the, the lip of the wheel up close to the edge of the wheel arch, I don't want it to add rub before it even gets close to the bodywork. So we're gonna have it a little bit inset. So much like when I did the floating piece up here, I'm gonna use TIG wire and we're gonna run across the tubes and then I'm going to bend some aluminum tubing and weld it into place. Pretty straightforward, so it should go without any complications, hopefully.
This is working out very well. I, I, I hoped initially that we did like sparse tubing. And yes, like from here to here is a little questionable, but just running some wire across really fills in the gaps for any kind of templating reasons like this. And what's best about this is because the wiring is on the outside of the tubing, it's like mimicking the skin. So long as my aluminum tubing is on the inside of it, which I can clamp to it as well, we should be golden. We're soaring today, which is good because we have a flight to catch in like eight hours. So we got a lot of ground to cover. <laughs> Because it's just a simple arc on both sides and it should be the same, I'm gonna test the other side. If our math was right and our fabrication skills are right, it should fit really well. It's like perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trace the outline of this tube on the table over there and then I can just bend this twice and copy paste it for both sides. That'll save a lot of time. This is the benefits of having a table with cardboard on it all the time. You can just draw right onto it. This side's done, and I feel like it's a lot more solid now, and it looks much cooler. Again, this is not indicative of the actual wheel arch. It's well above it. It's purely for structure, not for aesthetic. And honestly, none of this tubing is for aesthetic. It's just for structure to put the skin onto. Because as a reminder, we're going to be skinning over every square inch of tubing on this with aluminum skin that'll be welded to it. It's like the uh, skeleton to the uh, skin that's going around. The aluminum meat, mm, delicious. So anyway, Let's uh, go to the other side and blast for that quick. The aluminum tubing is now completed. We're nice and strong in the back end. This thing is ready for more additional skin work to be done and it will not buckle under the weight anymore. So that's a win. What's your definition of completed? Uh, ready to move forward <laughs> with some steps backwards. For some, some more point. tubing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, there will always be more tubing to do in this project. Always, but I'm very happy with where it sits now because I can move forward with really dialing in the skin work and building across and doing wheel arches and especially excited to do the front edge right here at the gap, the clamshell. It's gonna be challenging, it's gonna be exciting. So you don't wanna miss that. And speaking of completed tubing, we've got these tubes welded in and I'm so happy because it's been driving me crazy for the last, I don't know, when did we cut those out? It's been over a year. Um, it's been driving me crazy that this was kind of floating and hanging on to half of a shock tower. So I'm glad these tubes are in here. It looks way more awesome. Mm -hmm. And now that this is locked in solidly, we can cut out this temporary brace, which is very important because we need space for our headers. You may be confused why this is getting in the way of headers because normally that wouldn't be in the way at all, but we're going with something different. 180 degree headers. The old bundle of snakes. If you're unaware, Google a GT40. If you like tubing and if you're watching us for any length of time, you better. This is going to add even more. <laughs> it's like, it really is turning into like the, the tubing, like the, the 3D pipes from yeah. the, the, the screensaver in Windows 95. <laughs> That's what it's really turning into now. That's it for this week because we got to go catch a plane. We're headed to SEMA. Look for a midweek video on that experience. Thanks for hanging in the shop with us.